I pulled my subscribers and some recent Google certificate holders in order to find out what helped them land their first job in data analytics. There was a clear winning strategy. Three out of four data nerds claimed that projects had the biggest impact on landing their first job. So I decided to investigate these portfolio projects of my subscribers to find out if they really were that great. And the results were, and I think that's pretty awesome. He's building this tool in order to help other people. I did have one major problem with this project, and that was, this is one of my favorite projects because it's one of data nerds. I'm Luke, a data analyst, and my channel's all about tech and skills for data science. And in this video, we're gonna be looking at a few of the top portfolio projects that I've found that were sent to me from my subscribers that they said had the biggest impact on landing their role in data science. In my last video, I spoke with Google Data Analytics certificate holders about what helped them land entry-level roles as data analysts. And spoiler alert, Although they felt the certificate was the best place to start, they found that their projects were the main motivation for employers to hire them based on the experience they showcased in them. So let's get into reviewing some of these portfolio projects that were shared to me by my subscribers. And before this, we're gonna be going from best to bestest. And we're just saving the best for last. Let's jump in. First project up is from Emiliano, who is from Mexico originally and is finishing up school in Canada. Personally, I really resonate with this project because it works to solve a problem many of you are curious to find out. He built a dashboard to find top skills for common roles in data science. So for example, we can look at data analyst roles here in the United States. And by looking at it, we can see that the majority of them require a bachelor's degree. Some of the top skills include SQL, Python, and R. And then the top softwares include Tableau and Power BI. So what makes this project so good at sending out a job search? Well, this problem is aimed at solving a real world problem that Emiliano identified on his own. As Emiliano puts in his GitHub, during the job search, he found that companies asked for an overwhelming amount of technologies. So he decided to compile this information into a single interface to help other students. And I think that's pretty awesome. He's building this tool in order to help other people. And that's such a big concept that data science is working to solve. And this is great to showcase to employers because it shows that you have the self-motivation to go search for a problem and then solve it. Now, Emiliano's project has one other great thing about it. But before we get to that, we need to pay some bills with the help of our sponsor. Morning, data nerd. Uh, I'm trying to have a sponsored segment right now. Oh, perfect timing. Okay. And data nerd's my line. Not to change subjects, but I've been getting Morning Brew's free newsletter in my inbox every morning since you last told me about them. It's like it's curated for us data nerds. Oh, so now you're cool with being called that. Yeah. And it not only keeps us informed with the current job market, but it also is great at sharing interesting statistics along with the insights associated with it. Like the recent analysis of population change across the United States. Yeah, I like how they use the census data for that. But hold up, this is my sponsor segment. And Morning Brew also goes well with the topic of this video as it's a great source of witty yet inspirationally relevant articles when you're looking for topics for projects to explore. Dude, you're totally stealing my sponsor again, and you're now trying to take over my video. Those that are interested in Morning Brew can use the link in the description to sign up. All right, you gotta get out of here. I gotta finish this video. Thanks Morning Brew for sponsoring this video. All right. Getting into the last major thing about Emiliano's project that helped him stand out. And that was this took advantage of showcasing the entire data pipeline process. From collecting and cleaning the data, to analyzing it, to then finally sharing his insights with a very user-friendly dashboard. Now Emiliano went above and beyond to use a web framework in order to build out this dashboard. And I think that would be unnecessary for entry-level roles, specifically data analysts. Instead, I could see somebody taking up a similar task using some tools like Python or SQL in order to analyze and maybe collect the data. And then from there using a dashboard solution like Tableau or Power BI that data analysts more frequently use. Next up is Stern from Calgary, and he dropped this comment that he landed a data engineering role with this project. And checking out, it's pretty cool. Stern used credit card data in order to build a dashboard application to determine if you qualify for a credit card. And I like this because this is a topic that even non-data nerds can dive into and see the value of. But this dashboard is not even the most impactful portion of his project. His readme file is the real winner. It provides in a concise manner the approach he took for the project, what technologies used, and then concise feedback on his findings. I like to call this the TLDR section of the project. Personally, I feel that all projects should have some sort of page or document that provides the highlights of the project in a concise of a manner as possible. I was actually talking to my friend Shashank about this recently on a live stream, and he talked about how as a hiring manager, he goes through and looks at projects. When you were interviewing people, right, you're, how long are you taking to go through an application? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> I look at it five seconds before I interview the person. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, and at the end of the, and, and you know, I, I would not at all say that is a best practice, uh, but right. I would say that is a normal practice. And so when employers are looking for a potential candidate, they don't have time to scrub through all these different projects. The more concise you can provide these insights, the more likely you're going to be able to get that job. 
And this really relates to your job in data science and that you'll need to provide this concise feedback to whoever you're working for. Now, I did have one major problem with this project and that was it did not use a unique data set. And what do I mean by that? So there's a lot of common projects that everybody does, such as Titanic, Minst, or even the Iris data set. This credit card data was very similar and that many people have used it in their projects before. So I reached out to Stern to investigate this further and I actually found that he has a unique connection to this data set and that he was declined for a credit card even though he had a decent credit score. So he wanted to investigate this data set further in order to investigate reasons on why he was potentially rejected. And he found some really unique insights because of this. So when it comes for data sets for projects, I find that data sets that have a unique and common interest with the person that's doing the project are most successful. So if you have some great ants that survived in the Titanic crash, then yeah, the Titanic data set may be unique and great for you. But otherwise, I'd find another data set that has more of a unique connection to yourself. Now I could go on all day about Stern's portfolio. He even has his own website that showcases his journey in machine learning. But we're gonna stop there and shift to another person that used media as well in order to showcase their portfolio. Sometimes when we think of a project to display our skills, we think we're limited to a standard data analytics project and following through in a data pipeline. Well, don't feel like you always have to limit yourself to this approach. Take Sven, for example. He's from Germany, and he runs a YouTube channel that shares Python and VBA tutorials. He landed his dream job as a data analyst in his company and contributes it to his online portfolio of his YouTube channel. And this example really gets into a common question that I get answered of what skills should you be showcasing? Well, in my last video, I was talking with Anant, and he shared this. Coding, everyone can do, but my strong point was I can visualize data, I can summarize data. So that is what I use my portfolio for and it made for a great talking point. And this approach is similar to what Sven is taking. He's good at data analytics, but more importantly, he's a strong communicator. So really what skills you showcase in your portfolio were up to you. I will rely on what is your strongest skill. And this also gets into another common question I get of where to showcase your portfolio. And frankly, it doesn't matter. As long as you're putting your projects in a place that's easily accessible. If you're strong with building dashboards, maybe try Tableau Public. If you enjoy writing, maybe try Medium. If you're a stronger coder, try GitHub. And if you feel like sharing short insights, maybe even try TikTok or Instagram. The point is, don't limit yourself and pick a medium that best showcases your strongest skills. Now, I have a whole video of how I used a similar approach to Sven in order to land one of my roles as a data analyst. So I really think that you can stand out by using a unique and different approach for this. One quick thing before we move into the last project. I'd like to continue this of sharing projects that helped you land your role in data science. But for this, I need your help. Using the link in the description below, you can fill out the short form about a project that helped you land your role in data science. And on top of this, I'm trying to find data analysts that landed their role without having any degree. So if you know anybody that fits this, please share this link with them. All right, save more and the best for last. This is from Valentin from France. He transitioned from a teacher into freelancing in data analytics after completing his Google Data Analytics certificate, and then more recently with this project into a full-time data engineering role. This is one of my favorite projects because it highlights on all those different areas and aspects that I talked about in those previous projects. For this, Valentin went through an entire data pipeline process in order to investigate a topic he was personally passionate about, avocados. In it, he investigated trends in rising prices and its effect on vegetarians. He took the effort to go through and collect all these weekly data reports in order to compile it into one database. And he didn't stop there. He also collected census data in order to use this to further analyze it. Although he now has this job as a data engineer, this is also a great example of a data analytics project as he identifies questions he wants to explore and then potential solutions. From there, he uses SQL and Python to explore the answers. What I really appreciate is that Valentin has a TLDR section where he goes through and details all of the methodology and findings in a very concise and succinct manner. And why do I think well, this is one of the top projects? Well, he really went above and beyond with the small details, like sharing his clean data set on Kaggle, providing a SQL and Python code for reference, creating a website to highlight the key findings, all while covering a topic he's very passionate about. So if you're looking for a template of a project to model off of, I think this is a great place to start. As always, if you got value out of this video, smash that like button. If you're interested in seeing another video about a project, check this one out. With that, I'll see you in the next one.